She was once asked, what will be your future work in India? She replied, my life is given to India. In it, I shall live and die. And she lived up to this aspiration. The memorial plaque on her samadhi rightly reads, here reposes Sister Nivedita who gave her all to India. Sister Nivedita was one of the foremost disciples of Swami Vivekananda. This year, we are celebrating her 150th birth anniversary. Nivedita was born as Margaret Elizabeth Noble in Dunganon in Northern Ireland on 28 October 1867. Before meeting Vivekananda, she was an educationist based in London. After teaching Vedanta in America, Swami Vivekananda was visiting London in 1895. In the midst of inner turmoil and void, Margaret listened to him speak. Soon, she accepted Vedanta as her own ideal and Vivekananda as her spiritual master. She also decided to take up the cause of serving India. She recalled later of her guru, I had recognized the heroic fiber of the man and desired to make myself the servant of his love for his own people. Vivekananda too had recognized the instrument for the work for India. I am now convinced that you have a great future in the work for India. What was wanted was not a man, but a woman, a real lioness, to work for the Indians, women especially. Margaret reached Calcutta in January 1898. In March, she gave her first public lecture in India. She declared, I have come to India to serve her with a burning passion for service. This saga of service began with selfless nursing of plague patients. There was a great outbreak of plague in Calcutta in 1899. Nivedita almost risked her own life serving patients in Calcutta slums. Vivekananda had brought Nivedita to India to work especially for Indian women. Swamiji's vision was to create a race of women educators who would work out the problems for women. On 12th November 1898, Nivedita convened a meeting to discuss the proposal for a girls' school. The next day, this school for girls was inaugurated at Nivedita's residence, 16 Boshpara Lane. It was blessed by Sri Sharda Devi, Sri Ramakrishna's spiritual consort. Classes started formally on 14th November. Three little girls were the first students. Nivedita had a total capital of 800 rupees, gifted by the Maharaja of Kashmir. Being a Brahmacharni, she had little resources of her own. In spite of that, she managed to provide even clothes and medical treatment to some of the students. It was not easy to get students for the school, as the then Hindu social customs were very rigid. Nivedita, however, went from door to door, pleading to parents to send their daughters to her school. This school has grown into the present-day Sister Nivedita Girls' School in Bagh Bazar, and Sister's house at 16 Boshpara Lane has been declared a heritage building. It has now been renovated and opened to public. According to Nivedita, women should come forward and sacrifice their narrow interests for the nation. This is the key to women's true education and emancipation. Nivedita contributed immensely in the promotion of science in India. Vivekananda had heard Jagdish Chandra Bose's presentation in Paris in 1900. He got one of his disciples, Mrs. Sarah Chapman Bull, to help Bose patent his discoveries. Nivedita met J.C. Bose in 1898. Later, she was to become a lifelong friend of Jagdish Chandra and his wife, Lady Abala Bose. Anglo officials conspired to suppress Bose's scientific work. Nivedita tried to protect his interests and promote his work. She provided much needed succor to Bose. She also assisted him greatly in the writing of many scientific books. The present-day Indian Institute of Science, IISC, in Bengaluru is the result of a chance meeting between Vivekananda and Jamshedji Tata. They were aboard the same ship from Japan to America in 1893. Jamshedji was deeply impressed by Vivekananda's emphasis 
on the development of science and technology in India. Thus, in 1898, he offered to fund the setting up of a postgraduate research institute for scientific education and training. As expected, the British tried to foil these efforts. Lord Curzon was especially vocal in speaking against the feasibility of Mr. Tata's scheme. Nivedita spoke and wrote in favor of the scheme. She met officials and tried to garner support for the cause. The proposed initiative eventually started functioning in 1911. Nivedita also left her mark in the revival of Indian art. She supported the new Bengal School of Art movement. She interacted with the painter Obanindranath Tagore and E.B. Havel, principal of Government Art School, Calcutta. She worked closely with Ananda Kumaraswamy, the leading philosopher and historian of art of that time. She also mentored young artists like Nandalal Bose and Asit Haldar and sent them to Ajanta and Elora to discover the roots of Indian art. She wrote essays on the national ideals of art in India. As with art, so with education, Nivedita's main idea was that Indians need to discover the national ideals in all spheres of life. Hence, she was part of the movement for national education in India. As an educationist, she believed in holistic education. She said, Our conception of education must have a soul. It must form a unity. It must take note of the child as a whole, as heart as well as mind, will as well as heart and mind, unless we train the feelings and the choice. Our man is not educated. Sister Nivedita wrote many important essays on how to write Indian history. She said that India is to be understood in the light of its history. Indian history clearly demonstrates that India is one country and one civilization. She was also involved in the Indian national movement. She was on good terms with both moderate and extremist leaders of the Indian National Congress. She had close ties with the underground revolutionary movement and especially with Aurobindo Ghosh. Soon, she was under British surveillance and narrowly escaped imprisonment. Nivedita exhorted Indians to develop a sense of civic nationalism, the idea that the nation was higher than the family. She travelled extensively in India visiting historical sites and giving lectures. There was not a great mind of her times in Bengal who did not know her personally. Her writings and speeches comprise five volumes of complete works and two separate volumes of letters. She was a gifted, multifaceted and strong-willed person with immense love for India. Such a great life came to an end in Darjeeling on 13th October 1911. In her will and testament, she bequeathed everything she had for the education of Indian women.